Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Higher Consciousness. Today I am sharing an astrology video and it is about the next upcoming full moon this February 2021. So this next full moon is going to be in the sign of Virgo. <laughs> okay, so what this means is that at the end of February 2021, on the 27th, of February is the next full moon. Um, with it being in Virgo at this time, we'll have just finished a Mercury retrograde cycle happening now until about the 20th, 25th. So hopefully this next full moon is going to put us back on track. And it looks to be that way because Virgo is known for its organization. Virgo is known for, known for its like fixings around the home. It's known for its, its work ethic, really. Um, so Virgo at this time is going to, is looking pretty promising with this month ahead. And I have a quick um, explanation about what else is happening in uh, the cosmos at the same time so we can start to understand what other elements are at play so at the time of this upcoming next full moon it's going to be an opposition of the sun and venus and so what that means is that venus and the sun are in pisces Pisces being known for its 12th house energy, its subliminal messages, subconscious, it's really exploring psychology and the reasons why behind it. Sometimes it can reveal darkness that we might not have been prepared for, and sometimes it can shine light in dark areas. So with this opposition of the moon, it kind of indicates that there's some sort of imbalance going on, some sort of like tug of war happening where the sun and Venus are kind of like gonna be buddy buddy. They're, they're lining up in Pisces. They're in opposition of the moon and Virgo. And so the sun, your identity, who you are, your ego, and how it relates to your love life are going to be very much in sync which is a good thing but on the other hand it's going to be contrast it's going to be opposite of the moon and so at this time we can feel some sort of opposition where a part of us is calling us to retreat okay so venus is entering pisces at this time and when venus is entering pisces that means we're gonna have like this 12th house energy we're going to have different energy than where Venus was before in the house of Aquarius. So with this new energy and what that means is there's going to be a tendency for things that were um, a love life, Venus representing the love life. So what was once very um, community based with being an Aquarius is now going to be more hidden or more prompted to be hidden. Or perhaps you might be even discovering some hidden talents or secrets about your love. Um, so these are the kind of things to look out for with Venus being in Pisces on the next full moon this February 2021, is what aspects are hidden, what aspects are coming to light, and it could also indicate like physically what is going on. Like for example, you might take a retreat or a little vacation, or you might take a weekend with just your love where you kind of turn off the phones and the emails. And maybe that's your way of this sort of transition is just retreating. So it can manifest itself in different ways. Um, and now I'm going to explain a couple more things just about the general cosmos before we dive into how this is going to affect each individual sign in the horoscope zodiac wheel. All right, so full moons, um, full moons tend to bring forward, they're like a culmination point. They're a point in which things are not brewing anymore. Things are coming to the light or being acted upon. So hopefully at this time, you're going to be um, seeing some results, 
seeing some results for things that you've been putting your intentions down on, working really hard for. Hopefully at this time, this full moon, you're going to start seeing some results and it's looking very favorable with Mercury no longer being in retrograde. Mercury retrograde may have caused a lot of your miscommunications, your travel delays. Maybe you were expecting like a tax refund or maybe you were expecting a scholarship or something really big like this. Maybe it's even just communications with the way you're communicating directly to people even without the money involved. So whatever kind of way you are communicating with others has been delayed and now with this next full moon you're going to be experiencing a clarification time a time in which those barriers are not in place anymore and you should start to receive those things that you've invested your time and energy into you should start to receive back at this time so definitely mark your calendars know that there is light at the end of the tunnel we can get through these challenging times right now so I do, I do want to say that with the full moon and Venus being um, in opposition, that at this time, since there is some kind of like tug of war with very, um, with kind of similar, similar characteristics of planets, um, the moon and Venus being feminine characters. So it's almost like we have this, this pull of feminine, femininity and feminine characters. So it's like you wanna find balance right now with your love life. Um, there's gonna be light shining on your love life with the sun in, in the same house as Venus in almost conjunction. So this is the perfect time for like divine feminines to partner together and kind of like paint the big picture. Um, so that's that's really like my own personal take there is that with the with Venus being opposite the sun with Venus being opposite the moon that you could be experiencing some kind of pull um, and at this time instead of adding to the pull um, we could see it as rather a balancing act complementary feminine figures so it's really up to you and depends on what kind of relationships are existing within your life right now, even with your friends, your partnerships, your business partnerships. So if it comes to mind where you've had been having some sort of opposition, then it might be the time to sort things through. Um, another thing I wanna say is that the full moon in Virgo coming up on the 27th of February is also like the completion of a cycle. So I looked back and found out when the last full moon in Virgo was and the last new moon in Virgo was for that matter. So the last new moon in Virgo happened on September 14th. So right now is marking a six month period time in which a lot has, has happened. Um, the full moon in Virgo the last time started the journey, planted the seeds, and now we're coming up at the end of that journey for this particular cycle, the six month cycle of moon and Virgo. So if you wanna look back and maybe check out your planners, your calendars, your phones, your notes, your photos, see what was happening in your life at about the September 14th to see exactly what seeds you were planting then and to measure your progress um, during this full moon and Virgo cycle. Thank you so much for bearing with me as I did take some notes here that I want to share as I'm working on developing my astrological skills. So one thing I wanna mention is that when I looked up the chart for the 27th of February, I noticed that the moon is creating sort of like a yod. Um, a yod is when there's one apex point way on this side of the zodiac wheel, and then there's two on the other side, and they're not exactly opposites, but rather these two are um, very much in sync, kind of buddy-buddy, and this one over here is kind of like at odds to it. So usually in astrology, this is called something like the finger of God, 
Um, usually when this happens, there's some kind of like spiritual transformation, spiritual growth that happens. So I did notice that there is going to be a yod happening with the moon. It's going to be the, the point over here and then the other points of the other side of the yod that are more in balance are Neptune and Saturn. So these two are in um, our sextiles. They're right next to each other in houses right next to each other while this one is in the house opposite them. So what happens is Saturn and Neptune are kind of like buddy buddy and the moon is in opposition. Um, Neptune's character being that of like the in this circumstance, I kind of want to describe Neptune and Saturn as if they were parents who are kind of like pointing the finger at the child and sort of like saying, oh, it's a child's problem, when really it's like the parents who are putting the pressure on the child. So I'm kind of seeing like Saturn as being the the character who it really is known for. It's the ruler. It's the one who makes the orders. It's the one who um, puts things in alignment. It's kind of like this hierarchical sort of figure. And Neptune is more of the, the quiet sort of withdrawn um, Piscean, the sort of like in very much withdrawn within. Maybe they have the universe with inside of them, but they are very withdrawn. So Neptune might be the mother having these sorts of characteristics while Saturn might be out there kind of like laying things down, laying down the law. And then meanwhile, the moon in this circumstance is like the child, um, the one who is like in the full spotlight making things happen. Um, but it's kind of like not really being fully appreciated by the parents at this time. So that's the way I'm, I'm seeing this yod is that the moon is like feeling kind of like a stranger. The moon might be like that child who's being mislabeled as moody, but it's really like the parents who are having this issue. So being on the lookout for those kind of oppositions, those kind of like um, scenarios happening with your within your own life, um, perhaps maybe not even necessarily your parents and you being the wild one, but perhaps see yourself in these other angles and see which exactly um, archetypes are playing a role in your life, archetypes of these planets. Okay, so. So I had to look up more about what the yod is just to get my terms down and make sure I'm giving you the straight facts to really just describe this in astrological terms. So the moon is out here, Saturn and Neptune are over here. And this point over here is called the third quincunx, and it's in conjunct to Neptune and Saturn which are sextiles, which are in a sextile right next to each other in the neighboring houses. Hello again, I am back to share our one by one zodiac by zodiac sign. What is coming to you in February 2021 with this full moon in Virgo and how it's going to affect each individual zodiac sign. Um, I now have my cat Karma sitting here with me and we're ready to go over um, this after a brief interruption. Before I get started with our horoscopes and describing how each horoscope is going to be impacted by this full moon in Virgo, I just want to mention first on helping you decide which horoscope you should check out and which horoscope applies to you. So first you might want to definitely see where your ascendant is, see which house or which um, horoscope the planet, the ascendant is at the time of your birth. You're gonna have to check out your natal birth chart and then look up and see, find your ascendant. That is definitely what you'll wanna watch what regards you in this circumstance is your ascendant sign because that is what starts the whole loop of the 12 houses. There's 12 houses and they start with the ascendant and then they loop around in a rotation. 
So that's where you definitely want to measure yourself or where you'll want to see your prediction. Um, on the other hand, you also might want to check out your sun sign, which is most commonly known. Your sun sign is usually known because it is your general horoscope, the time, the season that you were born in. So you might want to see your sun, um, but that is usually a given. So I also am prompting you to look up your ascendant sign as that is truly what I find of value here in this form of Western astrology. Um, the other thing you might want to look up is your moon sign. Your moon sign is helping you balance out that sun sign. So while the sun sign is more masculine, the moon sign is more feminine. So you might be looking at these feminine, lesser known side of yourself by looking at your moon sign and how that horoscope that your moon sign was in at the time of birth is impacting your life in that sort of um, subliminal, lesser known way. So I hope that helped. I'm gonna jump in now and give you a reading one by one on how the horoscope, your horoscope is going to be affected by this full moon and Virgo at the end of February, 2021. So let's get started with um, Aries. Aries starting it right off, right? So full moon and Virgo is an Aries sixth house of health, wellness, home organizing. Um, there's opposing planets. Of course, the sun, whenever there's a full moon, the sun is in opposition, which is why it makes full moon so powerful. But at the same time, Venus is also in opposition and these planets are in your 12th house of sacrifice. So you might have to compromise some of your privacy and seclusion in order to become healthier and more organized or you might feel confused whether you want to be seen or hidden. Um, this is the same with your love life because at this time you may be wise to focus on health and wait for this transit from the 12th house back into the first house of identity, ego. At this time, um, things are kind of hidden and with this next transit after the full moon is when you'll start to experience more of your true feelings. Um, so Taurus, Taurus, the full moon in Virgo is going to be in Taurus's fifth house of pleasure. So culminate, that's um, re referring to the culmination point of entertainment, romance, creative self-expression, even children. So there's opposition from the 11th house, the 11th house of um community, the 11th house of longer term communications. So you may be seeing some wishes and some love connections being fulfilled with Sun and Venus in the 11th house. Um, this is because these two in communication with each other, the, the pleasure aspect with the um, long term communication, uh, you'll see some of your fulfillments coming to fruition, um, your desires coming to fruition. Um, it, but it might feel like a balancing act between fulfilling your wants, demonstrated by the fifth house of pleasure, and fulfilling your needs, which is demonstrated by the 11th house of um, communication and of community. So you might be feeling that balancing act and trying to figure out, well, what do I really want? What do I really need? And the answer is finding balance between those two aspects. Gemini, full moon in Virgo for Gemini. Um, Gemini, the full moon in Virgo is going to be in your fourth house of home and family. There's going to be opposition from the 10th house of enterprise, ambitions, and career. So your sense of career might be feeling very much influenced by your home and family. So your sense of purpose and career might be feeling in alignment when it's in balance with your fourth house of home and family. That makes sense, right? Cancer. Um, so who else is a Cancer? I'm a Cancer. Um, 
So Cancer, the moon in Virgo is in your third house of sharing involving short-term communications, generosity, siblings, and short-term travel. Um, this is like that sort of ebb and flow kind of ephemerality, this sense of it's not going to be here forever. We should enjoy this in this particular moment. Um, the moon is being illumin illuminated by the sun, which is in your ninth house of purpose. So finding your purpose is leading you to sharing your truths from a place of generosity. You are connecting with people at a soul level and you are creating new partnerships through communicating. Leo, the moon is the moon in Virgo is in Leo's second house of material, money, cultivation and self-worth. So with the moon being influenced by the light of the sun in the eighth house, your eighth house of transformation, you can expect transformations to occur in your feelings of self-worth because you are attracting much abundance. Perhaps you in your enhanced self-worth during the past new moon cycle planted the seed to attract new opportunities, wealth, and materials. Virgo. The moon in Virgo is in Virgo's first house of self, self, life, new beginnings. Uh, the moon is being influenced by the light of the sun in the opposite house, the seventh house of balance, partnerships, marriage, and contracts. So your relationship is, is ready to take to the next level if you're in a relationship. And if you're not in a relationship, then it might be time to meet someone new as demonstrated by the first house of new beginnings. Um, if it's not a new relationship, it could also be a new job or opportunity because once again, the house, the first house of new beginnings is open-ended and could be referring to any sort of new beginning. Um, ultimately, what unifies it though is that whatever new opportunity is coming into your life is going to make you feel balanced. Libra. The moon in Virgo is in Libra's 12th house of sacrifice, transformation, um, releasing, healing, conclusions. So the moon is illuminated by the opposite sign from the opposite sign, which is the sixth house of health, wellness, uh, routine, and skill. So your lifestyle and routine is calling for a change. It seeks for, for you to meditate and nurture yourself. The stars really want you to create a positive self-image. They want you to have a positive self-care routine that is going to heal your life. Um, a spiritual transformation is likely to occur as you journey within. And I see that very much so by the pairing of the sixth and the twelfth house, the sixth house of wellness and health and the twelfth house of um, conclusions and leaving something behind, healing before we transition to something new. So you are going through a spiritual transformation. Scorpio. Um, the moon in Virgo is in Scorpio's 11th house of communications, collective involvement, wish fulfillment, and friends. The moon is illuminated in the opposite house, the fifth house of pleasure, entertainment, risk, romance, children, uh, creative expression. So your seeking of pleasure, romance, of creativity is going to be rewarded by finding feelings of social belonging. So perhaps this belonging, um, perhaps these feelings of belonging could come from attracting those relationships and partnerships that you are desiring. Sagittarius. The moon in Virgo is in Sagittarius's 10th house of enterprise, ambitions, career, society, and government. The moon is illuminated by the opposite sign, which is the fourth house for you of home, family, heritage, uh, comfort, and security. 
So be very aware of how your emotions, how your feelings about your home, your family, your home security are influencing the way that others in your community, your society are seeing you. So for example, if you're feeling secure about your home life, then others are picking up on it and they're ready to reward you. The community has heard your voice and they said, this person is doing great. We want to uplift this person because they're embodying our values of home and security. On the contrary, if you're not feeling too confident right now about your home life and your security, then your community could also be picking up on it and thinking, uh oh, there's work to be done here. Um, you might be coming off as less ambitious and less professional than you actually are. So just being very mindful about how you're feeling right now about home and family and how others could be picking up on those feelings. Capricorn, the moon in Virgo is in your ninth house of purpose, travel, higher learning, philosophy. The moon is illuminated by the sun, which is in the opposite house, which is the third house of sharing short communications and siblings. So it could be that you've recently started talking with someone new, that you're sharing about yourself with someone new, or you could be communicating more with siblings. Um, whatever it is, whatever kind of social interaction that you're having is influencing you to want to travel, to pursue higher education, to have a new philosophy. You're starting to realize how short life actually is by having those short-term communications and it's leading you towards finding more, wanting to find more purpose in life, more meaning. Um, so you might be you might be called to move, you might be called to travel, pursue higher education, and to expand your knowledge. Aquarius, um, the moon in Virgo is in your eighth house of transformation, karma, sex, and joint finances. The full moon is being lit by the sun, which is in the opposite house of the second house of material, money, and self-worth. So it appears that your fixation on your possessions is guiding you to a make it or break it situation. This transformation is coming up and it's related to finances. So your current views on finances will be changing with perhaps maybe a new sexual relationship or if you're in an older relationship, you could be merging bank accounts or filing your taxes together. Some examples of how you might be transforming your finances at this time. So if you have a positive self-worth at this time, it, it may be rewarding you by a new opportunity. There's this transformation coming up. So it could be a positive new opportunity if you're putting out yourself there in a positive way. On the contrary, if your self-worth has been lacking lately, there might be a door closing at this time. Um, so just be prepared for change either way with that house of transformation being involved. Pisces, the moon in Virgo is in your seventh house of partnerships, marriage and equilibrium. The moon is illuminated by the opposite house the sun being in the opposite house, the first house of ego, identity, um, appearance. So as you've been more accepting of your identity and building self-confidence, you are becoming more attractive. You're drawing in people. You're drawing in partners, love interests. So you might be drawing someone new in at this time or if you're already in an existing relationship, you could be rekindling. There could be some sparks at this time because of your new sense of self-confidence and assuredness. Um, this is a good time also to start signing some contracts and making commitments. So thank you so much for tuning in to this video. I hope you enjoyed this full moon in Virgo astrological predictions forecast for you and your individual zodiac sign. Uh, if this video is helpful, please like and subscribe down below. If you made it this far in the video, please leave a purple heart to let me know that you made it this far. Um, I thank you so much and we'll see you again soon next time. Take care.
拜。